Guys, welcome back to the AFL preseason running training mini series part two. Now, today I want to follow on from the first video where I spoke about the importance of having a structured preseason plan from October all the way through to April for different fitness levels and different player positions. Today, I want to look at the more intense style of training we introduce into our week, maybe once or twice at max and it's a progressive overload training which essentially just means it's a training system which as we get fitter the requirements of the speed that we have to run get faster and our recovery time gets shorter now there's so many different kinds of training formulas that you can use when it comes to progressive overload but one of the most proven and tested throughout our relax running membership is what we call the chart. Now, the chart is something that we start in January and it goes through to round one. And it's based on our maximum speed over 150 to 200 meters. What we do is say we run 27 seconds for 200 meters, then round one, we'll go out and we'll run 38 seconds eight times with 50 seconds recovery. And we'll do 10 reps. And once we get to 10 to 16 reps, we reduce the speed that we're running. So if we were running 38 seconds, we'll go down to 35. If we're recovering for 50 seconds, we now recover for 40. Now, depending on the chart, depending on the fitness, depending on the player that we're working with, the recovery times can drop as low as 20 seconds and the speed that we run can get as close to three or four seconds outside of our max. Now, the reason that we do that is because as our fitness increases, simply doing the same thing is not gonna bring any real benefits. So we wanna adjust with our fitness levels increasing, which is why we pick up the speed and reduce the recovery. But as I've said, uh, there's a lot of different ways to do it. One of the mistakes that too many clubs make, and I mentioned this in the first video, is they'll go out and say, okay, let's just smash ourselves as hard as we can for as long as we can. And there's no real structure to the training. And I understand that because for so many coaches, we're balancing full-time work and family commitments with the footy training that we're trying to prepare. And, and not just to mention the drills and the fitness and the individual player things, there's so much to look after. So. What this does is it eliminates the stress of all of that. It's a structured plan from uh, January all the way through to April, which if you're applying it correctly, is gonna make a massive impact with the players that you're working with. Now, if you want a little bit more of that stress removed from you, so many of our coaches on the Relax Running AFL membership use me as that. They can allow me to be the sounding board for their athletes and players to know how to structure it. So that stress just removed from your shoulders. But if you're trying to put in the groundwork and the planning right now, then one of the most important things I can recommend is making sure that from January to April, there's not just like one level of training, but it's a gradual progression. And by progression, we mean reducing the speed we run, reducing the recovery that we take, and then throughout time and consistency, watching the players adjust to that level of training. As I said, way more is uh, the Relax Running membership, but as a good start point, progressive overload is one of the most fundamental parts of the training plan.